Ah, uh, Soka continues the by now no doubt long and proud Disney tradition of hammering yet another Nine Inch Nail into the coffin of the Star Wars franchise. As Ahsoka is one of, if not the worst performing Star Wars shows to date, with 1.2 million in the first six days of its premiere, compared to 1.6 for The Mandalorian's third season, which was by far the weakest, and 1.7 for The Book of Boba Fett, which was it had a decent amount of name recognition for, you know, its titular main character, it swiftly proved itself to be perhaps the single worst entry into the Star Wars entertainment history of all times, which considering Disney's other proud tradition of introducing a new entry into that particular Hall of Fame every year, is in and of itself a little bit of an achievement now, isn't it? But what's worse still than merely Ahsoka bombing, which is but the last in a long line of massive failures for Disney, is the fact that this will not change, because Disney has managed to piss off actually Everybody, the left and the right and the centre, are unified in unswerving hatred of Disney. Because in their quest to cut right down the middle and find that elusive, larger audience, the mainstream, they've only succeeded in antagonising everybody. Because if your target audience has always been Group A, and then you decide to try and cater to B, you're going to cause some friction there. And when you then, in addition to that, also manage to perturb Group C as well, which is what Disney has managed, um, you haven't struck the wide, you haven't struck the wider audience. You've in fact managed to wipe out all the audiences together. <laughs> it's an achievement, frankly. So. Almost 50% of respondents to a Newsweek poll agreed that if Disney was going to reboot its vintage content, it should update plots to align with modern values. So this article is going to refer to a Newsweek poll which they do not actually link, which I find a pinch interesting in and of itself. Instead, all of these links simply lead to other Newsweek articles or to their larger collection of articles on Disney. Basically, they don't tell you where they're getting these numbers from, they're just saying, trust me bro. But but I, I'm inclined to believe them, so let's approach this in the spirit of charitability and assume their numbers are correct, right? And they are representative of the uh, of Disney adoring demographic. So they open with, this goes against the recent backlash which accused Disney of going woke by altering storylines of rebooted films such as the live action remake of The Little Mermaid, which cast a black actress Hale Bailey as the main character Ariel. Disney also faced criticism of casting Rachel Ziegler, who is of Polish Colombian descent as Snow White. Alright, so immediately, I don't actually think that goes against the backlash at all, because if less than 50% of your respondents said yes, they should update it, that means that you have 50 or lesser percent, you know, adding in a undecided percentage there, who don't like it. In fact, we will get to the exact numbers a little bit further down. The poll asks a range of questions including whether classic Disney films contain outdated offensive stereotypes, which they do. Duh. <laughs> they, they were filmed decades and decades ago. Only 26% of respondents strongly disagreed uh, or disagreed with the statement, while 45% strongly agreed or agreed with it. Duh. Uh, again, this is from 1937. Obviously, it is going to contain various stereotypes that in our progressive uh, political time are going to be considered outdated. The question is whether or not that makes it a bad movie or not. Another 30% had no feelings on the subject or did not know. Okay, so let's take this as an initial thing, shall we? So, the 45% are the people who say it should be updated. Okay, so 45% of your invested audience, those who have an opinion, say updated. 26% says no, and 36, 30%, excuse me, don't have any opinions either way. Okay, that is probably a bit of a bullshit lie, because it's in all the likelihood when they see something that is radical different from what they remember, they will inherently react with a little bit of, eh, I don't know about that, as that is basically human nature. 
When you're told that you will be watching Snow White, this is the image you have in your mind unless you have no frame of reference whatsoever. Which considering the you know household nature of Disney's entities is unlikely. But even if we assume that 30% literally have no feelings on this at all, you have now managed to actively alienate 26% of your audience. That is now a very large amount of people who strongly disagree with the direction you're going in and is going to be talking about it, going to making content about it, going to critique it, and going to become a loud minority. Assuming again, they are a minority, which I don't even think they are, frankly. In this case, you now have a lot of customers that will not be watching your show. Meanwhile, you have 45% who say they strongly agree with the changes. But will all of these actually watch the show? Well, judging by the previous history of wokeism, the people who keep saying, yes, you need to change this, you need to change this, very rarely, if ever, actually goes out and watches or purchases the material. And for the 30%, if they really have no strong opinions, we can at best mark them down to 50-50. So, assuming here that all 45% really are invested and will go watch it, and assuming that about half of the 30% are going to go watch it as well, you have managed to maintain 65% of your audience, whilst alienating or simply just ignoring 45%. That is unsustainable. I mean, back in the day, hating on Disney was just not a thing, because it simply put out a product, didn't talk about it, the people who liked it would go to watch it naturally and enjoy it. The people who didn't care about it, well, they didn't care about it. Simple as. It created an audience and then catered to that audience instead of trying to seek out an audience and attempting to convince them at the cost of the audience they already have. Yellen, the author of Celebrity Memoir from Ghostwriting to Gender Politics, that's a title, added that in recent years, Disney has visibly attempted to tackle these issues in their remakes, but a mass entertainment corporation like Disney will always put profit over progress. That is emblematic of the 45% there, because this is the it's never enough argument, of course. We've gone over this time and time and time again, in that nothing will ever be good enough. Nothing can ever be progressive enough, because if it is, You've reached the end of the line and you are no longer progressive. That is the problem with the entire political philosophy and the problem with trying to appeal to it. Because this is a lie, isn't it? Oh, we will always put profits over progress. If that was true, Disney would long since have just given up on diversity, given up on representation, and given up on politics because it has proven to be nothing more than enormous money drain. Again, you can see the numbers continuing to fall. The more diverse, the more inclusive the product, the less interested people are in it. And it is a simple observable fact that is borne out across every single goddamn form of entertainment video gaming and movies and TV shows alike. They clearly do care about your progressive ideology, which is why they are desperately pushing it everywhere, but you are not rewarding them with viewership numbers. The Newsweek Pool also asks, do you support or oppose remakes of Disney classics which change the plot and storyline of the original film to modern tastes and morals? The sponsors were overwhelmingly in favour of the updated storylines, with 44% agreeing and 24% opposed to such changes, with the 28% I'm presuming the company said uh, should do a bit of both. Okay. See, there's the thing. 44% agreeing that they should upside, update the story. Once more, we've got the same kind of numbers here. So you did actually manage to shed a percentage point or so there. That say they will totally consume the product, and yet again, history proves that they do not. Meanwhile, 24% who have proven that they will not purchase your product if you do have been alienated. And an even larger percent says, okay, you can tweak it a little bit, but don't go too far in the other direction. And again, considering that the only thing that is happening is that they go all the way in the other direction. In fact, isn't it? 
as mentioned, it is never progressive enough for the progressive, which they tell us again and again. They tell Disney again and again. It can never be progressive enough, which means that the 36% will never get their twists and tweaks and slight adjustments. They will only get what the 44% ask for, which means, again, you have managed to alienate the majority of your audience in favor of the minority. And even, that is even assuming that all of the 44% do actually go and watch your stuff. Disney would face an impossible task to ensure its vintage titles meet today's standards, according to Alexander Ross, which of course it would. But here's the thing. Here is the Chad move to do. Could you make Snow White um, compatible with modern day progressive politics? No, of course not. It's a story about magical dwarfs in a forest. It is a story, a story about female jealousy. Hell, the original title is about then sewing, or not, was it, was it melting iron shoes onto the evil step queen's feet and making her dance herself to death. No. No, you could not update this to meet modern day progressive standards, but that's exactly the thing. You shouldn't. You should simply go, yeah, no, we, this was created in 1936. If you've got a problem with that, don't watch it. Simple as. We're not going to force you to, but we're going to allow it as an option. What would be even worse would be to ban the inappropriate elements, and we need to see these within a historical context as a reflection on the times. They stayed light on our past, however unpleasant, Ross told Newsweek, with a now usual advisory, they should remain accessible to those who are interested. We need to continue engaging with these, the worst thing that could happen would be to shut down the debates. And that is the third position as well. The no, don't remove it, keep it there, because it adds context, which will of course be pissed off both if you don't do something new and if you remove the old. A bit for discrimination attorney, Andrew Lieb, the quickness at which people call for boycotts if something is deemed too woke, or at the other end of the spectrum too offensive, misses the opportunity to uplift the communities which once may have been the target for offensive stereotype. Yeah, sure, Disney has offensive old content. We should learn from it and celebrate how much more evolved we are today. So it is imperative that society both embrace our past and enhance our future, Lieb told Newsweek. So this is also the kind of more moderate progressive take, saying that okay, I recognize we shouldn't remove all of it because it's very unpopular. We should simply make things more representative, which again simply will turn things woke again. That is the problem. The only answer to this question is to disengage from the political aspect of this entirely. For whenever you do engage with it, you will always alienate someone. That is the lesson that Disney is very, very slowly and at tremendous cost, actually billions of dollars, are learning right now. They elected to wade into the public debate, one they knew very little about and were not at all equipped or prepared to deal with, and they have ended up in a position where in the best case scenario, they have reduced their total audience to 44% of the available masses. That is the issue with political corporations. You will always face the backlash. And when you then manage to hit that middle point, that tipping point, you will only slice off portions of your audience. You are not gaining a new and progressive audience from this. You are merely, merely alienating the old. And it is also because the markers of all of this are so very, very obvious. When you, for example, take Rachel Ziegler, who is obviously not a fit for the role, and everybody knows it, and is then willing to go out and publicly say that she is not interested in the role, and never has been... Well... <laughs> I mean, what, what do you want me to say at that point? This really should be pretty goddamn basic. You've got a character who is literally described as Snow White, and you elect to cast a Latino woman. Oh, Colombian. Uh, is that Latino? God even knows these days. Latinx, yes. Let's go with Latinx, shall we? <laughs> that way I can follow proudly in Disney's footsteps of pissing off absolutely everybody. It's not going to work. It simply is not going to work. 
We need to return to the time of apolitical corporations, where people weren't, because, again, again and again, on every poll you see people go, oh, we want moral corporations, we want moral corporations, we want corporations to take the lead in legislation, in morality, in ethics. People don't want that. And even the people that say they do are only, like, again, the 40-30%. Which again, true, are a majority, but if you simply didn't do anything, you would get the 44%, the 33%, and, I've messed up my math now, and the remaining percent as well simultaneously. That is how Disney became a household name, by simply taking things everybody liked, fairy tales, putting them to film, and going, hey, would you like to go watch a funny show about animals speaking to each other in the forest? And people went, yeah, I'd like to do that. It is a break from reality rather than a constant reminder of it. Now, I do think that Disney is slowly but surely learning at least elements of this, as we see through their various earning calls, as they admit that this is a problem. But whether or not they will be able to do anything in time to right their rapidly plummeting ship... That is an entirely different question, and even if they do, having actively antagonized so many of their audiences, well, even if they do turn around, they're just going to be pissing off the 44% instead of the 36. Oh, no, 66, more correctly. Don't bully me. I'm retarded when it comes to math. <laughs> Until next time, I've been Arch. Thank you very much for watching, and I do hope to see you all again soon. Till then... Have a good day.